Hello everybody, Lilium here. Welcome to the very first video on this channel and also the very first video in this video series. Uh, in it we are going to be talking about Spring. So we are going to be building a Spring uh, application, uh, REST, -based inter REST based interface, which is going to look pretty much like what I'm currently showing. Uh, I will be going into details here, uh, explaining what exactly we are going to build. And keep in mind that this is just for this tutorial. So maybe when later on we get some new tutorials, we are going to expand this and add more stuff to it and make it a bit more complex. So this would be just our base, our starting point, uh, where I will be explaining some basic concept on how you can set up your application and what your application should have and um, how you can actually do it. So let's uh, get into it. Uh, hopefully you can see my diagram here and um, we are going to now take a look at it and pick a starting point. So what is the first thing that we are going to build and what exactly do we have here and what uh, all of these classes represent? Um, my starting point would be, for example, this distributed entity, which would be our base class for all of the entities that we are going to have later on. For example, later when we build a user entity, he will extend this distributed one. So the distributed entity will be keeping all of our shared properties uh, for our entities and all of the how to name them object specific entity uh, properties like something user specific will be in this class later when we have i don't know a phone number or something like that which should be um, belonging to a different entity we are going to have that entity in the different class but also extending from the distributed entity in order to later be able to deliver this uh, to a front end, so we at the REST interface, we're going to need some DTO, so the data transfer objects, and we're going to do a similar thing there. We're going to have a base class, which would be this base DTO, which would again contain all of the shared properties. And then we are going to have an object specific class, like for example, for in the user case, it would be a user DTO. So the next thing, what we need to do is to be able to convert from our user class to our user DTO or from the distributed entity to the base DTO. We're going to have in that case an abstract DTO converter, which we do, which will um, work in the similar way as the rest of our services and components, which will be that the abstract class will contain all of the needed methods for a base conversion in this case. So it will be able to convert the base properties, but everything specific to a class will be done in the um, class specific converter. In this case, the user DTO converter. So as you can see, um, every entity will have its own converter and every converter will be extending the abstract one. So what, after we have all of this set up, we move on to our services. So in the services, we are going to have an abstract cradle service, which would contain some of the basic methods that we are going to need um, to have our application. Like for example, it's going to have a method to list all of the entities, or we're going to have a method to fetch an entity by ID. We're going to have a method to save this entity, to update, to delete, and many other stuff. Um, every entity will again have its own service, which will be extending from this abstract one. So like in this case, we're going to have a user service where we're going to keep some user specific methods. Uh, of course, this abstract curdle service will implement an abstract curdle API. And this API would again, just provide yeah, an API with all of the methods that we want to expose to our controller. And again, every class will have its own uh, interface, so its own API, like a user API will have this one and we're going to have some user specific methods there. Also, in addition, we're going to have this abstract cradle controller and we're going to have an user controller extending it with the user controller will contain the user specific endpoints and the abstract one will going to contain uh, some shared endpoints. And you can see that the front end, this nice guy here is going to be accessing this uh, user controller. So we are not going to build a front end, at least not in this tutorial. 
so we are going to use either some rest tests uh, so um, or we are going to use something like postman just to make some uh, http requests and the finally to be able to save our entities in a database we're going to need a repository so we're going to build a user repository will, which will be extending this distributed one uh, distributed one will again contain the shared methods and the user repository will contain the user specific methods which will be sa saved yeah it will be saving the them to the database and the distributed entity extends the cradle repository from spring so to be able to start to to actually work on this project so to follow this tutorial you're going to need some stuff for example you're going to need a java jdk i will be posting links for all of these things that you need so um how to install them how to set it up if you don't have it so you need a java java jdk uh, you're going to need uh, intellij or some other ide so i will be working with intellij i would really suggest that you get a uh, community edition also uh, so it's free you can just download it install it and it should just work and it's an awesome tool that will definitely help you with this and we're going to need um, mysql database so our database will be mysql and to have it, you need to download the uh, MySQL installer, which will help you to install the, uh, the server and workbench, which would, you can create in a database. Or if you already have some different tools that can uh, set up your database, that's also fine, as long as you have database to which we can connect to. Okay, um, having that settled, uh, I think it's time to build the base for our project. So we are going to use this awesome website, which allows us um, to build um, the base kit to bootstrap our project to add all of the dependencies that we are going to need. So as you can see here, uh, the first thing that we have an option is to change to choose how to build our project. So it can be either a Maven project or a Gradle one. Uh, I'm going to go with Gradle and the language I'm going to leave it at Java and the Spring Boot version also. Here in the project metadata, we can enter some project specific information. Um, so for example, you can enter your group name, the artifact, the name, description and stuff like that. So you can enter here whatever I want. I will just enter uh, something that relates to me. And the artif artifact will be just this tutorial. So this will be and yeah that's it and the next thing that you need to do is uh, choose the java version so depending on jdk you downloaded you want to do that here um i currently have uh, java 8 so i will be choosing 8. and the last thing that we need are dependencies so with the dependencies um these are the basic ones that we are going to start with so we are building a web application so we're going to need spring web so you can just type web and click it. it. You can see here that it's added. Okay, let's go to the next one. We are going to be connecting to the database. So we're going to need the JPA. And we are going to be building a REST uh, application. So we're gonna need some REST repositories. And for now, that's it. So we can generate this project. And as you can see, it's downloaded it in as a zip. So we need to extract it somewhere and then open it with IntelliJ. So let's just do that. And yeah, uh, where can we do this? So you can extract it anywhere you see fit. Um, I have a folder for it somewhere. Here. Yep. Cool. So once we have that, we have it set it up. Now the next thing is to open it with IntelliJ. Um, this is uh, the IntelliJ window that you will see when you don't have any projects. So this will be just empty. So the next thing you need to do is go to this open or import. Uh, you need to find the folder where you uh, extracted the project that we just created. So I have it here. Click OK and then uh, IntelliJ will import it. So the Gradle will do its build stuff. So we can just wait a bit. This will not take long. Um, after everything is set up, we are going to go to our project just to see what we have there. And uh, we're going to actually add some uh, properties to it. So, and so to just to explain what we need. So 
um, as you can see, we have um, two model, two folders here. So we have a, a main and a test. So the main one will contain our code and the test will contain yeah, the test code, of course. So you can see that we have one class here called tutorial application and it's a Spring Boot application, which is really nice. That we, that's something that we want. And here we have some tests and it's a Spring Boot test with um, tutorial application tests. Um, for now, I would just delete this. So um, we are going to come to tests uh, later on. So for now, please do not worry about that. You can just delete that uh, because this uh, annotation that we have uh, on the test class can create some issues when uh, building the project. So we're going to get, get that fixed later on. So for now, just delete it and don't worry about it. Uh, the next interesting thing that we have here are our resources folder. Uh, where we have the application properties file. This is where we enter some um, properties regarding the application, uh, our application that we're going to build. And for example, the thing that we are going to need now here is the connection to the database. So we're going to have to specify some stuff. I'm not going to type it out, so I'll just copy it from here where I have it. Um, and I'm going to explain this a bit later on, but for now, this is the important stuff. And we are going to have the DL auto set update. So this means that our tables will be created based of our entities that we built. And uh, Spring Data Source um, is important. So this part here is how you're going to name your um, database, so you're the database schema. Um, so this has to match and your database uh, should uh, you should be have to uh, you should have an user to which you can connect to so um i have a root user with the root password so if you have something different you have to enter that here and yeah that will be it for the database connection um for this file the next thing that we need to do is go to uh the settings so sorry the build gradle uh file and we have to have, add a dependency to the MySQL connector so that we are actually able to connect to the database. So I will also copy it from here and just paste it here. And as you can see, IntelliJ offers me to uh, refresh my Gradle. So I can just click this and it will refresh all the dependencies, download the new ones and get everything nice and ready. Okay, so the next thing is to create our empty schema. So I'm going to open my MySQL workbench and connect to my server. And uh, you can see that I have a schema here. So I'm going to create a new one. Name it tutorial because that's what I have in the application properties. Uh, if I would name it something different, I would just uh, use that name there. Uh, I will leave it empty so there are no tables created, nothing. So it's really just an empty schema and I can close this. So I'm done. And that would be it for this tutorial. We can actually try to start our application. We are not going to do any coding now. That will be uh, done in the next video. Uh, sorry, I said it will be it for this tutorial, which is definitely not true. We are going to do more stuff. I just wanted to end this video and have everything set up for actual code that we're going to do. And as you can see, our application has started and the Tomcat is running on the port 8080. We can change this port. So also in the application properties, you are able to change that. I will just leave it at 8080 because it um, yeah, doesn't matter. So yeah, that would be it for this video. If you have any questions or if you have any um, points uh, for me, just please write me in the comments and uh, I'll try to, to yeah, make it happen. Um, if I'm talking too fast or something, please just let me know. Or if you have something that you would like me to mention or explain a bit better, also please write in this uh, in the comments. And yeah, uh, hopefully we see each other in the next video.